Hi, I'm Dave from Urban Astro, and today I'm going to talk a little bit more about the items that I have gotten for my 6-inch Ritchie Creighton based on some questions that I have received uh, and feedback that I've received from last week's video. I got essentially two questions or a comment and then some questions from last week's video where I talked about the fact that I was probably going to end up keeping my 6-inch Richie Creighton. The first one was a comment by um, someone on my YouTube channel who talked about how that getting the items to collimate costs more than the scope itself or just about more than the scope itself and that is true. These things are not cheap. Um, this one here is not cheap and I'll get to this one here in just a minute. This one here is fairly cheap. This is a Cheshire eyepiece. If you're at all familiar with Newtonians, it's the same thing. It's a Cheshire. Basically, it has a reflecting window in here. The light comes in. It has little crosshairs here, and you can look through it and line up the crosshairs and line up whatever. Usually, there's a dot, or in the case of the Richie Creighton uh, secondary, there's a little donut, a ring, and you just center that into the eyepiece here it's got a very small little dot there for you to look through fairly inexpensive i think this was like maybe 20 bucks you can buy them pretty much anywhere anybody has these a gina astro you can go out on amazon there's nothing special nothing unique it's just really just a plain old-fashioned cheshire eyepiece where the cost comes in is for a howie gladder collimator laser collimator and these things are hard to find. At least I found this to be very, very difficult to find. And apparently, it comes, this particular version here, this particular laser version here, comes with both a one and a quarter and a two inch um, barrel so that you can use it either in a focuser that has a one and a quarter inch adapter or if you want to use the two inch, you can go ahead and use the two inch What's interesting about the Howie Gladder lasers is that they have ends here which you can swap out. And this particular end right here produces, the cons produces basically a dot. This is what you would expect from a laser pointer is that it would just produce a straightforward dot and like so. And this one happens to be red. A lot of them happen to be green. This one happens to be red. I like red versus green. I don't know. Some people think that green is easier to use to collimate. I find the red works just fine. Your mileage may vary. What makes this system unique is this piece here, and this is the concentric circle. And what this does is this produces the red concentric circles that you find, that you'll find is very helpful when it comes to producing or when it comes to collimating your scope. The concentric circles will help you see whether or not your primary mirror is adjusted accordingly. But anyways, hopefully you can see the concentric circles there. Uh, that's essentially what this particular adapter for the Ritchie Creighton does, is it produces concentric circles. And those concentric circles allow you to determine whether or not your primary mirror is properly collimated. So, and this guy, this Howie Glider, you can go out and you can um, you can Google it. But yes, it costs a fair bit of money. I, I think this thing sent me back about three hundred and fifty dollars, and this piece here was like another hundred dollars. So this is like four hundred dollars, which is almost almost the price of the scope, brand new, which I got for five hundred and something dollars. I think 529 anyways so that takes care of what you use to collimate and I'm probably not going to do a collimation video I might I might not there's enough videos out there that you can get the general gist if you've uh, collimated Newtonians you know how to collimate a Newtonian so you're already familiar with how to use a Cheshire it's difficult to do a collimation video because it's difficult to see what you need to see through like a Cheshire and it just makes it kind of difficult to really do a good collimation video. If I think about it, I'll link to some down below, uh, some videos that I used 
And again, if you've got the six inch, you're going to have to remove the Maricel. There's just really no other way to collimate that scope. And that's just what it is. So the second question was about the focuser. And some people wanted to know exactly what focuser and where I got it and how much it cost. So here is the Telescope Services website, T-E-L-E-S-K-O-P dash express dot D-E is the URL. And what I've got up on here is this specific TS Optics 2.5 rack and pinion focuser. It has the M90, so it just screws right onto those rings. And it has a rotator, so you can rotate it around 360 degrees. It's a really nice rack and pinion focuser. It's very, very smooth. I've had no issues with it. This is the short version. This draw tube travel is only 55 millimeters on this particular version. There's the standard, the TS FOCR 25, and it has a 90 millimeter travel. So depending on how, how short you want your back end, you may want to get the 90 or you may want to get the one with the 55. I chose to get the one with the 55 because I have additional rings, so I can just add more rings if I needed more spacing, more distance. This particular Richie Creighton supposedly is like, I think a 235 millimeter back focus. Figure that with the rings and with this thing going 55 mil for travel, that I would be just fine with this particular guy. Now you'll notice that the price is here. The price is gonna be different based on when you buy this thing, but right now it's 293 euros. And of course it gets converted into American dollars. And I don't know what the exchange rate right now is, but this is the focuser, it's a rack and pinion focuser. It works really good. I've used it basically on three or four nights thus far, and it's flawless. Now there is, if you scroll down, when you get to this page, there is this EAF TS FOCR 25. And what this is, it's essentially, it's kind of interesting. I, I, this is becoming more and more prominent, but it's essentially a plastic printed adapter piece. And it's specifically designed to fit both the TS FOCR 25 and the TS FOCR 25 S both the one that has the 90 millimeter travel and the one that has the 55 millimeter travel. And it's designed to fit on there. And I have to admit that yes, it does fit. Now, I know that I had a struggle getting the knob off. The knob was very hard to get off. It was on there incredibly tight. And I was afraid I was gonna damage the focuser trying to get that knob off. I finally had to get a screwdriver and basically kind of help to pry that knob off. It was a lot of effort, but it did come off and I was able to attach this little device right here. It's a plastic printed part. It comes the plastic printed part and it comes with the screws that you need. You remove the two underlying screws and then you got longer screws here that you fit and it fits like a charm and you're able to get the EAF in. It has these little spaces right here, both top, bottom. It's actually all four sides to enable you to get in and to tighten the little adapter piece that fits onto the uh, shank of the focuser and the shank of the EAF. So you're able to get in there and tighten those things up. So, but that's pretty much it. And this thing is 68.82 euros. So that's probably, I don't know, maybe 75 bucks or something like that. So altogether, you know, you're looking at probably about $300, 350 And again, I, I got the rack and pinion because I'm familiar with Crayfords. I use them a lot or use them a lot when I built my Newtonian telescopes. And for me, all the image train that I have with a filter wheel and with a rotator and my camera, it just made sense to me to go with a rack and pinion. And so that way I get consistent focusing points. I don't have to worry about any kind of slipping. It just makes it one less thing to have to be concerned about. So altogether, yeah, yeah. Uh, getting the, this cost 
of a Ritchie Crane, a six inch is pretty cheap, considering other kind of telescopes with that kind of reach at, you know, 1370 focal point for the six inch uh, F9. It's pretty cheap, it's 500 bucks. In fact, you can find used ones now for about 325. I went out on Astromart today, and yeah, there was a used um, Ritchie Creighton six inch out there, which is essentially, they're all made by GSO. They're just all rebranded. Um, and mine was rebranded as a TPO. Ioptron has one, Orion has one, but they're all essentially the same scope made by the same manufacturer. They're just got different paint color, but you can pick one up now. Um, like I said, out there on Astromart for like 325 bucks. And if I was doing this again, when I went to look out on Astromart, there wasn't any available. So I bought mine brand new and I bought it through, um, I think it was uh, OPT and it was like 525. And so with the collimation tools that you need, that kind of almost doubled the price and then getting this focuser and getting the EAF adapter again increased the cost and but at the end of the day you get a scope with 1370 millimeter focal length well to get galaxies it's cheaper than going out and buying a three thousand dollar 150 mil objective refractor is a refractor easier Absolutely. You just throw an EAF on it, throw it on your mount, and voila, it works. These things, a little more work, but I think at the end of the day, I'm going to be fairly happy with it. So, time will tell. I'm still troubleshooting some little itty bitty things. The other thing that you're probably going to want to get, <laughs> which I also picked up, is this guy right here forgot about this guy this is the tilt adapter this is what you use in order to tilt your whole image train so that way you are able to align your image train with the secondary and this is the tilt adapter and again this is another hundred bucks but it's worth it it has three screws for each axis there are three axes and this works with the M90 fitting, which is the size of the rings for an RC6, as well as the RC8. Pretty straightforward. And this just allows you to be able to totally orientate the whole image light path, if you will. Both imaging train itself and the secondary and the primary. So if all those are in alignment, you get good collimation. So this guy here also, I also picked up. So anyways, if you have any questions, just go ahead and put them down in the video down below. So thank you for coming on this journey with me, this journey of astrophotography, a journey of discovery, a journey of problem solving, a journey of discovering the delights of capturing the beauty of the universe that is before us. Here's another video showing more of my own journey. So come along. And as always, clear skies and happy guiding.